The 2024 season is essentially here if you did not make the playoffs. So today I'm bringing you my top 24 dynasty wide receivers going into this offseason because we have a lot of risers and a lot of fallers going into this rankings here. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get straight into it. All right, as you can see here, I have my top six tiers for my top 24 wide receivers dynasty wide receivers and as always my top two wide receivers jamar chase and justin jefferson both of these guys are interchangeable don't want to waste too much time if you guys are new here or if you guys been with us for a long time you guys know i like jamar chase a little bit better based off of the longevity of the quarterback pay uh, play with joe burrow we've also seen jamar chase with jake browning and how successful he can be with another quarterback as well which is also really encouraging one of my biggest i guess caveats or conversations i always like to have what i've always always had jamar chase over justin jefferson is the longevity of the quarterback play is he going to be in a quarterback carousel i do believe he is going to be quarterback proof when we truly have that information he's only played a couple snaps with josh jobs before he got injured as i'm recording this video i haven't seen it with nick mullins maybe that can be a completely different narrative so keep that in mind both these guys are interchangeable my one and two wide receivers but another wide receiver i think is worthy of tier one after you know the first 14 weeks of the, this you know 2023 fantasy season as i'm recording this is cd lamb he has been absolutely phenomenal currently the wide receiver two on the season he's currently averaging 21.8 fantasy points per game in my opinion i think he's hit that upper echelons where he can be with the jamar chase the justin jeffersons and the cd lambs Dak prescott is playing at a phenomenal rate right now and you know to all the cowboys fans you guys look good and I hate to say that as a Giants fan, you guys look good. You guys are legitimate contenders. And hopefully Dak does not choke because I truly do believe if he continues to play this way, you can win the Super Bowl. So keep that in mind. CeeDee Lamb has been phenomenal. I mean, if you look at the game so far this year, there's only one game he has had under double digits. That was in week five against San Francisco. I mean, he has been great. You know, in the last even three to four weeks, 32 fancy points, 19 fancy points. We've seen 39 fancy points, 28, 41. He has hit those game-breaking, league-winning, week-to-week winning opportunities for you coming into this year. And I think he is deserving of being in Tier 1 as of now. All right, starting off with my second tier. I have four wide receivers in my Tier 2. Amon Ross St. Brown, or excuse me, A.J. Brown, Amon Ross St. Brown, Garrett Wilson, and Tyreek Hill, okay? A.J. Brown, obviously, I do have him. I would say as my wide receiver 4B, 4A, excuse me, he is... You know, the longevity with Jalen Hurts is exactly what I'm looking for. He has a long-term contract, Jalen Hurts and A.J. Brown, especially what he has been doing this year. Wide receiver for 19.7 fantasy points per game. Has been healthy so far this season and been getting the opportunities and what you wanted to see all season long. <clears throat> Amon Ross St. Brown, somebody who is also playing a phenomenal role. Currently, as I'm recording this, wide receiver 8, 19.1 fantasy points. He is clearly the number one target the number one wide receiver on this team now i do believe there could be a narrative where maybe a mom Ra might drop just based off of the competition that could potentially be coming to him right i doubt this personally because of all the weapons that the lions currently have but what if they draft an amika and buka uh, you know, what if they draft um, a Roma Dunze, a Brian Thomas, an Xavier Worthy, a Troy Franklin? You know, a lot of people love Keon Coleman. What if they get somebody like that that can take opportunities away from him as well? Because we've seen the input of Sam Laporta, who's taken opportunities away from Amon Ra, but Amon Ra still has been fantasy relevant. We've seen Jameer Gibbs and David Montgomery be really successful. We have Jamison Williams, who's kind of being more of a gadget play and a field stretch and not somebody... That was going to be taking opportunities away from Amon Ra, as a lot of the narratives were when he was coming out of Alabama. But, you know, Amon Ra St. Brown has been fantastic so far this year. He is my wide receiver 4B. As you can see here, my wide receiver 5. My wide receiver 6 is Garrett Wilson. You know, very disappointing. Not even disappointing, but 
He has been winning you games. He has been seeing the targets. He's been seeing those opportunities week in and week out there with Zach Wilson. The ceiling with Garrett Wilson when a, when Aaron Rodgers does come back in 2024 is going to be right back where it picked up when we were start coming into the 2023 season. He was going off the board as a wide receiver five. At some, at some points, the wide receiver four, right? So those are the type of opportunities and expectation I personally still have with Garrett Wilson if Aaron Rodgers is going to continue to be with this team, which I truly do believe. I mean, we saw what he can do with a mediocre quarterback in Zach Wilson. Just imagine Aaron Rodgers in that upside. And you hope that he has another two to three years with him as well, and Aaron Rodgers specifically. So keep that in mind. Tyreek Hill, I mean, if you drafted him in your redraft leagues, you know, wherever you drafted him in the first round, he has been an absolute league winner for you, averaging 24.8 fantasy points per game. You can see here he's in my tier two. I think as long as he's in the NFL and as long as he is playing this game with Tua, he is going to be elite. He is going to be getting those opportunities, and there's not going to be a step back. Now, whenever that step back is, I'm not necessarily sure. He doesn't look like he's missed a step. He's still one of the fastest wide receivers in the NFL at his age. So Tyree Kill, in my personal opinion, still deserves to be in a top, you know, top tier, in my personal opinion, despite his age. I'm still drafting Tyree Kill as high as the second, fourth, or second, third, and potentially even fourth round, depending on how some of these wide receivers are going to be landing as the season goes on and progresses. And, you know, when it comes down to quarterbacks, wide receivers, running backs, whatever that case looks like. So those are my top two tiers. All right, heading into my third tier. This was one of my toughest tiers to navigate as I was, you know, prepping for this video. This is also my biggest tier here. So keep in mind, I think there's going to be a couple of names that a lot of people are saying I would not have them this high. Let's have a conversation. Chris Alave is my next wide receiver on this uh, in this tier. Tank Dell. Once again, we'll have a conversation. DJ Moore. I think two of these guys. I I would say you guys wouldn't agree with Brandon Ayuk and Puka Nakua here. Five wide receivers in my tier three, starting off with Chris Alave. He is still putting up these numbers that we were hoping and expecting coming into this year. A lot more inconsistencies than we liked, you know, coming into the 2023 season. In my personal opinion, that has to do with Derek Carr. He hasn't been the best quarterback for Chris Alave. He's been averaging 14.4 fantasy points per game currently so far. As I'm recording this video, he is the wide receiver 17. I do believe we could see potentially a coaching change and an offensive coordinator change, whatever that looks like for the New Orleans Saints. Not only that, maybe even a quarterback change potentially. Does this team go and get a, a J.J. McCarthy, a, a Bo Nix? You know, what, what is their move going to be? Because I don't think Derek Carr is a long-term answer, and I think they also know that as well. Tank Dell is my next wide receiver here. You can see he is a top 10 wide receiver for, for me. You know, with the sample size that we've seen with C.J. Stroud and Tank Dell, that connection that they have already created, he, in my opinion, is deserving to be here, and I think he is going to have – the longevity with the quarterback play and we're going to be surprised and i think he could potentially be a steal one of the steals of the draft going into next year when you're doing dynasty startups or whatever the case may be right you know in this sample size that we've seen with tank dell from weeks 9 to 12 where he really took off right he was the wide receiver three averaging 23.7 fancy points per game right i mean he was getting 11, 14, 10, 8 targets in those four games when he truly got the keys, you know, to this offense with C.J. Stroud. If we put that into a full season there, Tank Dell no doubt would have been a top 10 wide receiver going into this season, right? I completely agree. I raised my hands. I was wrong. I was completely out on Tank Dell based off of size. Zach and myself, we readjusted. He was a really good route runner. He did have those traits and abilities. But I'm giving him his flowers in the minuscule, you know, sample size that we see. Not only that, the way C.J. Stroud has performed and played, this is going to be a top quarterback wide receiver duo in the NFL. I see. I think of this as a Jalen Hurts. A.J. Brown, you know, the, the Dak Prescott, C.D. Land, 
You know, Kirk Cousins, Justin, Justin Jefferson, Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase. That's what I see him as with Tank Dell. This is going to be a connection for a very long time. And you're saying, what if they draft the top wide receiver? Sure, that's going to be an outside wide receiver, not not a slot wide receiver. And I said this in, you know, my rookies rising in my rankings, saying the only way I'm going to be really concerned is if Emeka and Buka does come to this team. Because I do believe outside of Marvin Harrison, Emeka and Buka is one of the most elite slot wide, re slot wide receivers coming into the 2024 class. Tank Dell is my top 10 wide receiver. My other wide receiver here, as you can see, is DJ Moore. He has been phenomenal with Justin Fields. He's also been producing a little bit without him. Currently wide receiver seven as I'm recording this video. Someone that I think has been very underrated. He's currently averaging 17.8 fantasy points per game. With Justin Fields on the field, 22, 22, 26, 27. We saw that 49-point game on, on Thursday night football. He has been great so far in this offense. The biggest question mark here is that he can even get an upgrade with Caleb Williams, and people are still, you know, kicking rocks with DJ Moore. The other biggest caveat here, they do keep Justin Fields, and they draft Marvin Harrison. Yes, I would have to adjust my rankings because I wouldn't have DJ Moore in my top three tiers. I tell you that right now, if Marvin Harrison is on this team, okay? But I would say, you know, if they do get rid of Justin Fields and do not take another top wide receiver, DJ Moore could be a top 12 wide receiver going into the 2024 season. Maybe if they do draft a Roman Doomsday or a Troy Franklin or Mika and Buka, we can have different conversations. I might adjust accordingly without no, without a doubt. But I think DJ Moore, as of right now, is worth being in my tier three. My next wide receiver here, as you can see, Brandon Ayuk, 16.3 fantasy points per game. One of the biggest things here, does he stay with the San Francisco 49ers or does he walk? I truly do believe there's multiple teams that he can go to where he could be a threat. You know, they think about T. Higgins walking. Is he going to get T. Higgins money or can he get, you know, a, a better, can the Bengals get a better deal with getting someone like a Brandon Ayuk? Does he go to somewhere like the Jets and be the wide receiver too? Whatever the case may be. I still think Brandon, you can be a, a wide receiver one on a team wherever he goes. And Puka Nakua, I think the biggest guy, the biggest one of the biggest risers, and I think he could continue, continually rise as this all season continues. Puka Nakua, currently wide receiver ten, as I am recording this video, has been phenomenal, averaging seventeen. Point one fantasy points per game broke records all 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 season in the first four weeks five weeks without Cooper Cup he has been great and I continue I truly believe he's going to continue this going into next year if Matthew Stafford and Sean McVay is going to stay on this team and I think that is my biggest caveat here and I he will be moving in my rankings if both of these guys are no longer on this team if Matthew Stafford stays I'll still keep Puka where he's at now. But if he, Matthew Stafford leave and there's a new quarterback, and I'm not necessarily sure what that looks like, Puka Nakua could potentially be falling in my rankings. All right, let's get into my tier four here. Another four wide receivers I have in this tier. Jaden Waddle, Devonta Smith, Michael Pittman, and Stephon Diggs. Okay, and I think one of the biggest ones I think a lot of people are going to be maybe commenting about potentially, in my opinion, would probably be Jalen Waddle. A lot of people, especially coming into this season, we love Jalen Waddle, myself included. But as the season went on, you know, I was having conversations. If you guys have been with us in our redraft channel, Zach and I were having conversations. I told Zach, I was like, look, going into next year, the way Jalen Waddle is performing right now, I'm not necessarily sure if I see him as a top 10 or a single digit type of wide receiver. I more see him in the teens because he has been very inconsistent. He's clearly not the number one target in this offense, obviously with Tyree Kill. Now, Waddle does get the opportunity, but it's nowhere near the wide receiver one expectations that we have him for him as a talent. I would say anywhere else in this offense or in, in a team or without Tyree Kill, Jalen Waddle is a number one wide receiver, but Tyree Kill overshadows him. His shadow is too big. Is too big for Jalen Waddle to perform, in my opinion. And look, he has been very inconsistent. You know, 13.7 fantasy points per game. You see these games, 8 fantasy points, 14 fantasy points, 8, 9, 13. And then he has these big games, the 25 games, the 19 games, right? The 18-point games. 
those are the up and downs and inconsistencies when it comes down to Jalen Waddle. And it's not something that I am loving as I think of Jalen Waddle coming into this season. That is the same thing I would say for Devonta Smith, wide receiver 15 so far as I'm recording this video here, 14.9 fantasy points. He's finding the end zone in the second half of the season, but once again, a more inconsistencies. After that game where A.J. Brown complained, you know, to Jalen Hurts and uh, Nick Sirianni, Devonta Smith kind of just went, he went into his own corner, right? Like, he, we were all frustrated if you were Devonta Smith owners. One fantasy point, nine, eight, then you get 22, 14, 24, 23. Like, he has these up and down games, very inconsistent. I just think that Devonta Smith or A.J. Brown's shadow is not as big as what Tyreek Hill's shadow is the way you know, two would just peppers Tyreek Hill in the way they just try and force the ball to Tyreek, unlike A.J. Brown, in my opinion. Obviously, you can see the difference with, you know, Devonta Smith being wide receiver 15 as I'm recording this, and then Jalen Waddle wide receiver 26. I mean, maybe you have to put, put into account that he did miss a game in week three, but keep that in mind. My next wide receiver on this list, I think one of the most underrated wide receivers is Michael Pittman. I mean, oh my goodness, what he has been doing has been underrated. I mean, my guy has been getting peppered with targets. He's currently um, getting averaging 17, point, 17 points per game. And he is second in, in, in targets amongst wide receivers behind Keenan Allen. This is the opportunities that you want to see. But now the biggest caveat here is, does he stay with this Indianapolis Colts team with Anthony Richardson does come back? And how does that affect him when Anthony Richardson does come back? Because one of the biggest things that we were concerned about was that Anthony Richardson, you know, his touch, his accuracy, what is all that going to look like? Does he use his legs more than he throws the ball? Michael Pittman still getting those opportunities now with Gardner Mitchell. And we've seen it with as well with Anthony Richardson. But they all came in the fourth quarter. But I guess points are points and opportunities is opportunities, right? And my last wide receiver here is Stefan Diggs averaging 18 points per game. Wide receiver is six on the season as I am recording this video. He has been seeing the drop off in production here since week 10. Six fantasy points, five fantasy points, six fantasy points. He has been inconsistent in the second half where he has been very consistent before week 10 of this season, which has been a bit surprising. But look, I truly do believe he's going to stay with this team. I will be surprised if they walk away from him. Obviously, he's a 30-year-old wide receiver. Um, and I do believe the Buffalo Bills are in contention to draft the wide receivers. That are Roma Dunze, like we said, and Xavier Worthy, and Adonai Mitchell, or Brian Thomas. Th these type of caliber wide receivers, in my opinion, does take away targets from Stephon Diggs. And we might see the dip in production and in targets for Stefan Diggs going into the 2024 season. So keep that in mind as we potentially might have to adjust adjust accordingly. All right, my tier five, three wide receivers, and they are all rookies here. Jackson Smith and Jigba, Zay Flowers and Jordan Addison here. Look, another team with opportunities. All of these three wide receivers are going to have opportunities going into the 2024 season. Jackson Smith and Jigba, not the season that we were hoping and expecting. Maybe some people were saying, hey, Tyler Lock and DK Metcalf was there. I understood, but I thought that was going to really transition. And maybe we are seeing the transition now. You know, we've seen week 13 against Dallas where he saw seven or 11 targets, caught seven out of 11 targets there. San Francisco caught four out of seven targets. He's getting the average targets of about, you know, five to six targets per game, but not seeing the fantasy points and the fantasy outcomes that we were hoping and expecting from Jackson Smith and Jigba in his rookie year. You know, Geno Smith has been playing up to par. He has been struggling with injuries. And I would also even put that the same. I mean, if Jackson Smith and Jigba was struggling, and Tyra Locker was struggling. I think, you know, it was just a whole offense that was struggling when you really look and, you know, dig deep into this. But the opportunity is amazing. Tyra Locker does, or, you know, the, the Seahawks do have an out for Tyra Lockett going into 2024. I could see them potentially walking away from someone like a Tyler Lockett, which means Jackson Smith and Jigbo could easily step into all those targets as we were hoping and expecting into this year. But another year in this system would be great. But another caveat here is that the quarterback could be in play 
could be a change as well. Bo Nix, J.J. McCarthy, is it Michael Penix, is it Jaden Daniels? What Do these guys fall into the middle of the draft depending on where the Seahawks are going to be picking from? Whatever that looks like, I think there could be a quarterback change which could help him or hinder him going into this year. Za Za, wide receiver, 27 so far this year, has been doing great. A little bit disappointing because how good the Ravens have been. They haven't been needing to utilize him in some of these blowout games we saw like with Detroit, right? We saw with Detroit. We saw with, if I'm not mistaken, Tennessee and Arizona and all those other games where they just led the team, you know, in other in other positions where it was Gus Edwards or Lamar Jackson. But we've seen how Zay Flowers could be utilized without Mark Andrews. And I think that is the biggest thing. When Mark Andrews went down, Zay Flowers has seen a massive uptick in production. Week 12 caught five out of eight in a touchdown, 23 fantasy points. And then week 14 here, over 20 fantasy points and 10 targets. I love Zay Flowers. I truly believe he can be an easy riser for me. I can see myself, depending on the offense, depending on if they don't draft another wide receiver, I can see him moving. You know, I can see myself moving him above Michael Pittman, potentially, if Michael Pittman goes to a different team, uh, Devonta Smith. Just all depends on what that looks like going into the 2024 offseason. And then Jordan Addison, one that has been playing phenomenal. I think he's done better with you know Justin Jefferson in the game we saw that big game if I'm not mistaken um what was that San Francisco on Sunday night or Thursday night where he had what three touchdowns or two touchdowns it was crazy him with Kirk Cousins um but I think he has done overall better with Justin Jefferson it just seems like he not that he can't get open but there's just a lot more struggle to find opportunities when it does come down to only Jordan Addison without Justin Jefferson on the field, not knocking him whatsoever. Just saying, I like the opportunities with Jordan Addison and Justin, Justin Jefferson when they're both on the field, which I truly believe all three of these guys are going to be phenomenal here. All right, going into my last tier here, my tier six, another five wide receivers and another tier that I truly believe could be very fluid as the offseason progresses. Debo Samuel, T. Higgins, Nico Collins, DK Metcalf and Hollywood Brown there. OK, look, Debo Samuel obviously struggling with injuries all you know, in the middle of the season here, but is coming back and being a force to reckon with in the second half of the season, 22 fantasy points, 35 fantasy points, and then 34 fantasy points. Currently wide receiver 16. I mean, we've seen these games where it can be Brandon Ayuk, George Kittle, Debo Samuel. It's Christian McCaffrey every week. I think there's a two different two things that can happen here. Brandon Ayuk walks, George Kittle walks. But Debo Samuel stays with CMC, and they maybe they invest in a lower end wide receiver. You know, maybe they figure out something in the offseason and they might get another big wide receiver, maybe a, a receiver bigger than Brandon Ayuk, right? A bigger quote unquote name than Brandon Ayuk. So keep that in mind. T. Higgins, another wide receiver, dealt with injury all this offseason. I'm not necessarily sure. I personally don't believe the Cincinnati Bengals have the opportunity to keep Jamar Chase and Joe Burrow. Correct me if I'm wrong, if they paid Joe Burrow already down in the comments, but I'm pretty sure they haven't paid him. So Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase, they have to pay. But if they already paid Joe Burrow, then I don't see them paying top tier money for T. Higgins and Jamar Chase. I just do not see it. So I do believe T. Higgins does walk and go to another team. Another wide receiver struggling with injuries has missed about three to four games this year. Hasn't been seeing it. I mean, we saw that monsoon, uh, not monsoon, but the weather game in week one where he, he gets no no catches but eight targets. And then he comes back, gets 28 fantasy points. He gets the opportunities, but Joe Burrow has to be under center for him to get that. Nico Collins is one of the biggest risers here for me. A top wide receiver, and I think this is also very fluid when you think of Nico Collins because I see all I can see him being completely irrelevant. Wherever the Texans do... You know, I think he can be irrelevant depending on the wide receivers. And let me tell you those wide receivers. Obviously, Marvin Harrison Jr., Emika and Buka, I can see him being irrelevant. Roma Dunesde, I think makes him irrelevant. Brian Thomas, I can see him making irrelevant. Those are the four names that truly do scare me. But if I if you tell me Troy Franklin is there, uh, you know, Xavier Worthy is there, I think they potentially draft those guys as more of a field stretcher. Then, you know, a big body wide receiver that goes up for those contested catches will keeps Nico Collins safe. 
So any big body wide receivers that do go to the Houston Texans that's not named Nico Collins, you know, that could be a big issue for Nico. So if that is the case, then Nico is probably nowhere near my top 24. But if he does stay and they do not invest in a weapons in, in the NFL draft, then Nico Collins could even be a bigger riser because of how big of a boost that I truly believe CJ Stroud is going to be giving to these wide receivers. Currently, Nico Collins is wide receiver 12 on the season. He's currently averaging 16.4 fantasy points per game. That's more than Brandon Ayuk. That's more than Devonta Smith, Chris Olave, Devontae Adams. I mean, DeAndre Hopkins, DK Metcalf. That's the type of numbers Nico Collins is putting up with CJ Stroud. So keep that in mind. I love Nico Collins going into next year. Should I should have held on to both of those guys personally, CJ Stroud and Nico Collins with my takes. With my takes. Shout out to the NFL um, draft there. <laughs> DK Metcalf is my next wide receiver. I think he is safe here. We haven't seen too much consistency throughout the year, but the past two games for DK Metcalf has been significantly better. You know, before this, you know, 37 point game, Nico Collins was probably the, you know, outside the top 25. Now he's wide receiver 20. So keep that in mind. There was a big, big boost in his production there with that, with that game. And last but not least here is Hollywood Brown. My biggest concern with Hollywood Brown is Marvin Harrison Jr. If the Arizona Cardinals do not draft another wide receiver, which I truly believe they do, but hear me out. I know they have two picks, if I'm not mistaken, going into this draft. If they somehow draft Olu Fushano with the first one and then maybe Rome's a doomsday, I think Hollywood Brown is still relevant. I'm not saying he is going to be the, you know, the wide receiver six that we saw him be in the first six games of the season last year in 2022, but he's a good wide receiver one or, you know, one B, right? A wide receiver, a high end wide receiver two. If it's Marvin Harrison Jr., I, I'm not saying he's irrelevant, but he is going to be dropping significantly in my ranking. So look, once again, another person that is going to be fluid, potentially moving based on what these landing spots are going to be for this 2024 wide receiver class. So keep that in mind. We'll love to have conversations. Comment down below with any questions, comments, or concerns. I know I had a couple bold takes. You guys know me. You guys can roast me. Do whatever you like in the chat. If you want to get my full rankings, all you have to do is go to flogfantasy.com slash land and get all of my dynasty rankings. We've been had a massive update to the website. Not only do we have one of the best trade calculators on the market, but you get all of my rankings, all of Zach rankings, and all of the content from the, all the other content creators on that site. We appreciate each and every one of you. And as always, it's all up. Now that those idiots are done talking, who needs some rankings? Hell yeah, I need some rankings. Then use promo code LAND, L-A-N-D, for 30% off any membership at flockfantasy.com. Oh. It's so easy. Even your grandma could scan that QR code right there.